Lenin's Infantile Disorder and the Third International by Franz Femfert, published in the Action on August 7th, 1920. This is an introduction to the text, not the text itself, which I will be reading after the introduction. <laughs> In April 1920, when Lenin was putting the finishing touches to his left-wing communism and infantile disorder, he was as yet unaware of the founding of the KAPD, which would reinforce his determination to liquidate a political ten tendency which seemed to him to be a denial of reality. In order not to lose touch with the masses, one must go wherever the masses are to be found. This is the axis around which all of the arguments in Lenin's book revolve, making the book a theory of manipulation. We shall take advantage of the discord in the enemy's ranks. We shall unmask the leaders of the Labour Party before the eyes of their membership by making proposals which they cannot fulfill. We shall use the space provided to us by bourgeois democracy against that democracy. The KAPD, through the pen of Gorder, who published his open letter to Comrade Lenin in July, still attempted to open up a dialogue. Gorder stressed the point that, unlike the situation in Russia in the countries of the old bourgeoisie, with deeply rooted democratic traditions, no method could transform the parliaments into weapons, and one did not need to unmask a social democracy and a handful of trade unions, which ra which, rather than carry out, quote, betrayals, end quote, fulfilled a precise function. The open letter was an attempt to prove to the Bolsheviks that they were mistaken in their efforts to get the communists to initiate, imitate them everywhere. Gorder argued that, Gorder argued as if the KAPD had a clearer awareness of the real interests of the international and the Russian state than Lenin, Trotsky, or Zinoviev. Until the middle, and even until the end of 1920, the German left communists did not consider themselves to actually constitute an opposition to the Bolsheviks. To the contrary, it was the Spartacist leadership which seemed to them to be unfaithful to the principles they felt they held in common with the Bolsheviks. Femfer argues from a noticeably different position, since like Rula, Femfer rejects any positive role for a party. He does, however, just like Gorder, but even more explicitly, argue as if a revolutionary situation was in the process of maturing and as if all that was needed was an adequate slogan to be launched by a resolute minority at the right place of the factory. Quote, the reproductive cell of the new society, end quote political stability which was being ever more distinctly established after 1920 <laughs> deprived the quote self-initiative end quote advocated by Gorder and Femfert of its practical scope to cite just one example contrary to the hopes of the supporters of an electoral boycott abstention was of little account in this confused and turbulent period, the masses were far from demonstrating their loathing for the ballot box, especially on the occasion of the elections to the Constituent Assembly, which would decide upon the political regime to succeed the Empire. On January 26, 1919, they voted in droves, two and a half times more voters than in 2012, two-thirds of them entering the voting booth for the first time. Gorder's open letter to Comrade Lenin was left without any public refutation. It would be ten years before its first French edition saw the light of day, published by the group of communist workers, among whose members was André Prudhomme, and thirty-nine more years before the second French edition was published. Gilles Dove and Denis Autier or Denis Autier. Okay, so here's the actual essay. Section 1. The Third International should be the association of the revolutionary proletariat of all countries in the fight against the dictatorship of capitalism, against the bourgeois state, for the power of toiling humanity for communism. Having originated in a country where the workers have already by 
great efforts conquered this power has helped the Third International to win the sympathies of the world proletariat. Enthusiasm for this new worldwide association of the exploited goes hand in hand with enthusiasm for Soviet Russia and for the incomparable heroic combat of the Russian proletariat. But the new structure of the Third International has of yet had neither the time nor the opportunity to achieve moral results as an organization. The Third International can and will be a moral force if it represents the expression of the will of the world's revolutionary proletariat, and then it will be indestructible and irreplaceable as the international of the fighting proletarian class. But the Third International would be an impossibility and a vacuous phrase should it want to be the propaganda instrument of one or more parties. If the Third International were really the association of the world's revolutionary proletariat, the latter would then have the feeling of belonging to it, regardless of formal membership. But if the Third International presents itself as the instrument of the central power of a particular country, then it will bear within itself the seed of death, and it will be an obstacle to the world revolution. The revolution is an affair of the proletariat as a class, the social revolution is not a party matter. We must be yet more precise. Soviet Russia will perish without the help of all revolutionary combatants. All the workers who are really class conscious, and the syndicalists, for example, are also unconditionally part of this category, are ready to actively come to its aid. The Third International would act in a criminal and counter-revolutionary manner, if in the interest of a party it were to do anything which could douse the sacred fire of fraternal solidarity which smolder in the hearts of all proletarians for Soviet Russia and not yet for the Third International as a separate organization. Is this so hard to understand? Is it folly, Comrade Lenin, for us to shout at you? It is not we who need the Third International at this time, but the Third International, which needs us. Section 2 Lenin indeed, indeed thinks that... Lenin thinks that is indeed folly. In his work, Left Wing Communism and Infantile Disorder, which he had just launched against the revolutionary proletariat, Lenin thinks that the Third International must abide by the statutes of the Russian Communist Party, Bolshevik, and that the revolutionary proletariat of all countries must submit to the authority of the, quote, Third International, unquote, and therefore to the tactics of the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks should determine what arms the fighting proletariat of the rest of the world should use, and only those proletarians who unconditionally obey will be chosen to belong to this world association. In the principles of the Second Congress of the Third International, Lenin was formulated, Lenin has formulated his postulate in a yet clearer way. Not only has he given general instructions, but all of the details of tactics, of organization, and he is even prescribed the name, which should be assumed by the parties in all countries, and the finishing touch. Quote, all the decisions of the Congress of the Communist International, as well as of its executive committee, are binding on all parties affiliated with the Communist International. End quote. Even if this is methodical, it is still madness. In a country as small as Germany, we have repeated experience most recently in March of 1920, of the fact that a tactic which leads to victory, for example, in the Ruhr, was impossible elsewhere, that the general strike of the industrial workers in central Germany was a joke for the Vogtland, where the proletariat has been condemned to unemployment since November 1918, and should Moscow be the supreme general staff for us and all the other countries? What draws us towards the Third International is the shared goal of world revolution, the dictatorship of the proletariat, communism. The Third International must stand alongside the fighting proletarians of all countries, instructing them concerning the various situations and types of revolutionary civil war. 
the combatants would be asses instead of combatants were they to want to have nothing to do with the task of examining the weapons used by the comrades fighting here and elsewhere. But they would be sheep were they to fail to stop dragging themselves down roads which they had long since recognized to be impractical for them and which they consequently abandoned. Lenin's attack against us, in its tendency and in its detail, simply in its details, simply monstrous. Lenin's attack against us, in its tendency and in its details, is simply monstrous. His text is superficial. It does not conform to the facts. It is unjust. Only in its phraseology does it display any hardness. Of the rigor of the thinker, Lenin, which was ordinarily manifested in his polemics most of all, not a trace is to be found. What does Lenin want? He wants to tell the Communist Workers' Party of Germany, the KAPD, and the revolutionary proletariat of all other countries that they are imbeciles, idiots, and worse yet, that they are not docilely knuckling under to the wisdom of the bonzes, since they are not allowing themselves to be led in an extremely centralized way by Moscow through its intermediaries, Radic and Levi. Or Levi. Or Levy. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Paul Levy. I think that's what that Levy is referring to. But It's Paul Levy. Paul Levi? Who knows? When Germany's revolutionary vanguard rejected participation in bourgeois parliaments, when this vanguard began to demolish the reactionary trade union institutions, when it turned its back on the political parties of leaders in accordance with the watchword, the emancipation of the workers can only be the task of the workers themselves. Then this vanguard was composed of imbeciles, then it committed, quote, leftist infantilisms, end quote, then it necessarily had to be denied the right to join the Third International. This was the result of Lenin's pamphlet. Only when the workers of the KAPD return, like repentant sinners, to the Spartacus League, the sole bringer of salvation, will they be allowed to join the Third International. So this is how it stands. Back to parliamentarism. Enter Legion's trade unions. Join the KPD, the Communist Party of Germany, that party of leaders in its death throes. This is what Lenin is shouting at the conscious German proletariat. As I said above, a monstrous book, I must also call attention to the futility of the arguments which Lenin dust off from the 1880s to persuade the German leftists that he knows how to employ quotation marks against them. All his explanations concerning centralism and parliamentarism are on the level of the USPD, the Independent Social Democratic Party. And what Lenin writes in favor of working in trade unions is so amazingly opportunist that the trade union bonzes have set themselves no more urgent task than to reproduce and distribute this section of Lenin's work as a leaflet. The polemic which Lenin directs at the KAPD is scandalously superficial and inexcusably inept. In one passage, for example, he says, Quote, in the first place, contrary to the opinion of such outstanding political leaders as Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, the German, quote, leftist, end quote, as we know, considered parliamentarism to be, quote, politically obsolete, end quote, even in January 1919. It is clear that the, quote, leftist, end quote, were mistaken. This fact alone utterly destroys at a single stroke the proposition that parliamentarism is, quote, politically obsolete, end quote, end quote, Lenin. This is what the logician Lenin writes. 
In what way, perhaps, tell me, is it, quote, clear, end quote, that we are mistaken, or were mistaken? Perhaps in the fact that in the National Constituent Assembly, Levy and Z Zetkin did not sit next to Crispien's people. Perhaps in the fact that this communist duo is now seated in the Reichstag. How can Lenin so thoughtlessly and without offering even the shadow of proof write that our, quote, error, end quote, is clear, and then add the assertion that, quote, this alone destroys the proposition, end quote, etc. Monstrous. Also monstrous is the way Lenin responds in the affirmative to the question, quote, must we participate in bourgeois parliaments, end quote? Quote, this is a Lenin quote, Quote, criticism, the keenest, most ruthless and uncompromising criticism, must be directed not against parliamentarism or parliamentary activities, but against those leaders who are unable, and still more against those who are unwilling, to utilize parliamentary elections and the parliamentary, parliamentary tribune in a revolutionary communist manner. End quote. Lenin. It is Lenin who writes this. Lenin suddenly wants to, quote, utilize democracy, end quote, a method which, which he had settled accounts by referring to it as the, quote, demand of renegades, end quote, in the state and revolution, in the renegade Kautsky, and in bourgeois democracy and proletarian dictatorship. The revolutionary proletariat of Germany has distanced itself from the, quote, venal and corrupt parliamentarism of bourgeois society, end quote, that, quote, system of illusion and deceit, end quote. This proletariat has fully acknowledged the battle cry, quote, all power to the councils, end quote. It has come to understand that it cannot, quote, utilize, end quote, the bourgeois parliament, it has recognized the trade unions as institutions which necessarily lead to a community of labor between exploiters and exploited, and for that reason alone sabotage the class struggle, and it is of little importance whether their members should criticize this or that. The revolutionary proletariat of Germany has had to atone for its submission to leaders with hecatombs of workers' corpses. The infamous Central Committee of the Spartacus League has destroyed that illusion. The proletariat has definitely had enough of all that. And now Lenin comes along and tries to make us forget the bitter lessons of the German Revolution as well as the lessons he has himself taught. Is he trying to make us forget that Marx taught that it is not individuals who are responsible and that it is parliamentarism which must be fought and not the individual parliamentarians. Several months have passed since, quote, communists first took their seats in the Reichstag. Read the minutes of the parliamentary sessions now that Levy and Levy Zetkin, quote, have utilized, end quote, this tri tribune, quote, in a revolutionary communist manner, end quote actually no more than meaningless journalistic verbiage. You have read the minutes, comrade Lenin. Where is your, quote, keenest, most ruthless and uncompromising criticism, end quote? Are you satisfied with them? It is easy to prove. The KAPD has most effectively utilized the, quote, electoral struggle, end quote, in the sense of carrying out revolutionary agitation, and it has been able to utilize it more effectively than the parliamentary communists precisely because it has no, quote, candidates, end quote, running after electoral victory. The KAPD has unmasked the parliamentary scam and has brought the ideas of the councils to the remotest villages. But the vote hunters have confirmed during the few months of their activity in parliament that we were right to be anti-parliamentarian. Excuse me. But the vote, 
Hunters have confirmed during the few months of their activity in Parliament that we were right to be anti-parliamentary. Comrade Lenin, has the idea never occurred to you, a Leninist idea, that in a country with 40 years of social democracy's parliamentary foolishness behind it, that party also wanted in the beginning to, quote, utilize, end quote, that tri tribune solely for propaganda. It is a totally reactionary act to enter parliament. Do you not understand that in a country characterized by parliamentary cretinism, parliamentarism can only be stigmatized by means of the boycott? There is no stigmatization more violent, none which penetrates more deeply into the consciousness of the workers. A parliament unmasked by a boycott carried out by the proletarians would never be able to deceive and trick the proletarians. But a correct, quote, programmatic, end quote, speech, which Clara Zetkin delivers with the approval of the bourgeois and social democratic newspapers and from which the press takes what seems suitable, such a speech engenders respect in the bourgeois parliament. Had the bosses of the independent social democratic party not gone to the constituent assembly, the consciousness of the German proletarians would be much more developed today. Section 3. Lenin favors, quote, strict, the strictest centralization, end quote, end quote, iron discipline, end quote. Lenin wants the Third International to endorse his views and to reject all those who, like the KAPD, are critically opposed to omnipotent leadership. Lenin wants military-style authority to prevail in the parties of every country. The instruction of the First Congress of the Third International had a somewhat different flavor. In those instructions, directed against the independents whose fighting spirit was uncertain, it recommended, quote, separate the revolutionary elements from the, quote, center, end quote, something which can only be achieved by means of resolute and merciless criticism of the, quote, center, end quote, leaders. They also said, quote, it is in addition necessary to form an alliance with those elements of the revolutionary workers' movement who, although not previously members of the Socialist Party, now stand completely on the terrain of the proletarian dictatorship in its Soviet form, that is, first of all, with the syndicalist elements of the workers' movement." End quote. But now a different tactic prevails. Instead, the slogan is, Down with the syndicalists! down with the, quote, idiots, end quote, who do not submit to the bonzes. The executive committee is in command, and its orders are the law. Lenin thought he could quote Karl Liebknecht against the, quote, leftists, end quote. I shall quote Karl Liebknecht against Lenin, quote, The vicious circle in which the big centralized organizations operate provided with functionaries who collect their salaries and who are quite well paid considering their social background consists not only in the fact that these organizations are creating in this professional bureaucracy a social layer directly hostile to the revolutionary interest of the proletariat, but also in the fact that they confer power upon a leader who easily becomes a tyrant and is chosen from among those who have a violent interest in opposing the revolutionary politics of the proletariat. While the independence, the will, the initiative, and the moral and intellectual autonomous action of the masses are repressed or completely eliminated, the paid parliamentarians also belong to this bureaucracy, end quote. Quote, there is but one remedy, on the organizational plane for this evil, suppression of the paid bureaucracy or else its exclusion from all decision-making and the limitation of its activity to technical administration work, prohibition of the re-election of all functionaries after a certain term of office, which shall be established in accordance with the availability of proletarians who have in the meantime become experts in technical administration, the possibility of revoking their mandates at any time, limitation of the purview of the various offices, decentralization, 
the consultation of all members in regard to important questions, veto or referendum. In the election of functionaries, the greatest importance should be at should attach to the proofs they offer concerning their determination and readiness in revolutionary action, of their revolutionary fighting spirit, of their spirit of boundless sacrifice in the active commitment of their existence. The education of the masses and of each individual in intellectual and moral autonomy, in their capacity to question authority in their own resolute self-initiative, in the unrestrained readiness and capacity for action, in general constitute the only basis to guarantee the development of a workers' movement equal to its historical task, and also comprise the essential conditions for extirpating the dangers of bureaucracy, end quote. Quote, every form of organization which obstructs the education in an international revolutionary spirit the autonomous capacity for action and the initiative of the revolutionary masses must be rejected. No obstacle to free initiative. The educational task most urgently needed in Germany, a country of blind, passive mass obedience, is to favor this initiative among the masses, and this problem must be resolved even at the risk of being exposed to the danger that, momentarily, all, quote, discipline, and all the, quote, solid organizations, end quote, might all go down the drain. The individual must be given a margin of freedom much larger than he has been attributed with until the present by tradition in Germany. No importance at all must be concealed to the profession of faith in words. All the dispersed radical elements which fuse into a determined whole in accordance with the imminent laws of internationalism, if intransigence is, practical, is practiced towards all opportunists and tolerance is practiced towards all the efforts made on behalf of a revolutionary fighting spirit in the process of fermentation, end quote. That was a, uh, an extended quote from uh, Karl Liebknecht. Section 4. I know that Lenin has not become a, quote, renegade, end quote, or a social democrat, although left-wing communism has a purely social democratic effect. The German leaders were saying almost exactly the same things in 1878. How, then, can the publication of this text against the world revolution be explained? The monarchists have the custom, in order to excuse the stupidities or the crimes of their monarchs, of always alleging that their majesties were, quote, misinformed, end quote. Revolutionaries cannot. They do not have the right to make such an excuse. We are well aware, of course, that Karl Radek and the Spartacus League, in order to divert Lenin's attention from the causes of their political failure, have purposefully told him lies about the situation and the revolutionary proletariat in Germany. The insolent letter directed by Karl Radek at the members of the KAPD shows just how things have been presented to Comrade Lenin, but this by no means excuses Lenin. In any event, such ex exculpation is useless. The fact remains that Lenin, with his stupid pamphlet... <laughs> has complicated the struggle of the revolutionary proletariat in Germany, although he has not abolished that struggle. It is true that Lenin has been shamelessly lied to about the affairs of the Spartacus League and the KAPD, the Communist Workers' Party of Germany, but he should have nonetheless said that it is a serious error to identify the German situation with the Russian situation. Lenin was perfectly capable, despite Radek, of seeing the difference between the German trade unions, which have always led a counter-revolutionary existence, and the Russian trade unions. Lenin knew perfectly well that the Russian revolutionaries did not have to fight against parliamentary cretinism, because parliament had neither a tradition nor any credit among the Russian proletariat. Lenin knew, or should have known, that in Germany the leaders of the party and the trade unions 
necessarily brought on the 4th of August 1914 by, quote, utilizing, end quote, Parliament. That the authoritarian and militaristic character of the party, accompanied by blind obedience, has stifled the revolutionary forces in the German workers' movement for decades. Lenin should have considered all these things before understanding, undertaking, excuse me, Lenin should have considered all of these things before undertaking his battle against the, quote, leftists, end quote. Had he done so, a sense of responsibility would have prevented Lenin from writing this unforgivable pamphlet. Section 5. To convince the world proletariat that left-wing communism indicates the right road to the revolution for every country, Lenin presents the road which the Bolsheviks followed and which led to their victory because it was and is the right road. Here as well, Lenin finds himself in a completely untenable position. When he cites the victory of the Bolsheviks as proof that his party had worked, quote, correctly, end quote, during the 15 years of its existence, he is hallucinating. The victory of the Bolsheviks in November 1917 was not due solely to the revolutionary strength of the party. The Bolsheviks took power and achieved victory thanks to the bourgeois pacifist slogan of, quote, peace, end quote. Only this slogan defeated the national Mensheviks and allowed the Bolsheviks to win over the army to their side. Thus, it is not their victory in and of itself which can convince us that the Bolsheviks worked, quote, correctly, end quote, in the sense of maintaining the firmness of their principles. It is instead the fact that they know how to defend this victory now, after almost three years. But, and this is a question posed by the, quote, leftists, end quote, have the Bolsheviks always run their party dictatorship in the way that Lenin demands in left-wing communism? That the revolutionary proletariat of Germany should run their party? Or has the situation of the Bolsheviks been such that they did not need to abide by Lenin's, quote, condition, end quote, who demands that the revolutionary party, quote, be able to mix with, to fraternize with, and if it so desires, to a certain extent to unite with the broadest masses of the workers, primarily with the proletarian masses, but also with the non-proletarian masses, end quote. Until now, the Bolsheviks have been capable of putting into practice, oh, that's a quote from left-wing communism and infantile disorder, until now, the Bolsheviks have been capable of putting into practice and had only succeeded in putting into practice one thing, the strict military discipline of the party, the, quote, iron, end quote, dictatorship of party centralism. Have they been able to, quote, mix with, fraternize with, and if they so desire, to a certain extent to unite with, end quote, the, quote, broadest masses, end quote, of which Lenin speaks? Section 6. The tactics employed by the Russian comrades are their business. We protested and had to treat Mr. Kautsky as a counter-revolutionary when he allowed himself to slander the tactics of the Bolsheviks. We must defer to the Russian comrades in the matter of their choice of weapons. But do we know one thing? In Germany, a party dictatorship is impossible. In Germany, only a class dictatorship, the dictatorship of the revolutionary workers' councils, is capable of victory, and it will be victorious, and what is most important, will be able to defend its victory. I could now write, following Lenin's recipe in left-wing communism, that this is, quote, clear, end quote, and then change the subject, but we do not need to evade the question. The German proletariat is organized in different political parties, which are parties of leaders with distinctly authoritarian characteristics. The reactionary trade unions controlled by 
the, the reactionary trade unions controlled by the trade union bureaucracy, due to the strictly centralized nature of the trade union structures, are in favor of, quote, democracy, end quote, and the recovery of the capitalist world, without which they could not exist. A party dictatorship in this Germany means workers against workers. The Noska era began with the party dictatorship of the SPD. Footnote. Noska, SPD Minister of War in December 1918, organized collaboration between the Socialists and the Freikorps, architect and symbol of the ensuing bloody repression. A KPD, Spartacus League Party dictatorship, and Lenin proposes no other kind, would have to be imposed against the workers of the USPD, the workers of the SPD, the trade unions, the syndicalists, the factory organizations, as well as against the bourgeoisie. Karl Liebknecht never aspired to such a party dictatorship with the Spartacus League, as the whole corpus of his revolutionary work demonstrates, and as is shown in the passages I quoted above. It is incontestable that all the workers, including the workers at the beck and call of Lijian and Scheidemann, must be supporters of the new communist order, providing their internal divisions do not render the repression of the bourgeoisie impossible. Are we to await the last judgment when all the pro proletarians, or even only a few million of them, are members of the KPD, which is today composed of no more than a handful of employees and a small number of people of good faith? Perhaps the Third International will be the inducement that will oblige the revolutionary workers to enter the KPD, as Karl Radek and Mr. Levi have, or Levy, have imagined. Can the egoism of its leaders remain ignorant of the fact that, at this very moment, the majority of the industrial workers and the rural proletariat is mature and ready to be won over to a class dictatorship? Sorry. We need a slogan for summoning the German proletariat to unite. We possess it. All power to the workers' councils. We need a place for recruitment where all the class-conscious workers can meet without the interference of party bonzes. He keeps using this word bonds, B-O-N-Z-E-S, which I don't know what it means, but it sounds like the... Uh, party bosses or maybe their decrees I'm not sure I'd have to reread read the whole thing to get a firm definition but anyway we have such a place well, we need a place for recruitment where all the class conscious workers can meet without the interference of party bonds we have such a place it is the workplace the workplace the reproductive cell of the new community is the base for recruitment for the victorious realization of the proletarian revolution in Germany. We do not need bonzes, but conscious proletarians. Those who currently call themselves syndicalists or independents share with us the goal of destroying the capitalist state and realizing the communist human community, and therefore they are part of us, and we shall, quote, mix with, fraternize with, and unite with, end quote, them, in the revolutionary factory organizations. The Communist Workers' Party is not, therefore, a party in the bad sense of the word, because the Communist Workers' Party is not an end in itself. The Communist Workers' Party makes propaganda for the dictatorship in its sense of the word, because this dictatorship is not an end in itself. The Communist Workers' Party makes propaganda for the dictatorship of the proletariat, for communism. The Communist Workers' Party trains its combatants in the factory organizations, 
where all the forces that will abolish capitalism establish the power of the councils and permit the construction of the new communist economy are concentrated. The factory organizations are brought together in the union. The factory organizations will know how to guarantee the rule of the proletariat as a class against all the manipulated manipulations of the party bosses against all traders. Only the power of the class provides a broad and firm foundation as capitalism proves. The Communist Workers Party of Germany has had to endure Lenin's left-wing communism. Radek's maledictions and the calamity, calumnies of the Spartacus League and all the parties of leaders because it is fighting for the class rule of the proletariat, because it shares Karl Liebknecht's views concerning centralism. The Communist Workers' Party of Germany will quite well survive left-wing communism and everything else. And whether or not Karl Radek understands this, and whether or not Lenin writes a pamphlet against us and against himself, the proletarian revolution in Germany will take different paths than in Russia. When Lenin treats us as, quote, imbeciles, end quote, it is not us but he himself who is the target, since in this matter it is he, it is we who are the Leninists. We know this for a fact. Even if national or international congresses prescribe the most detailed itineraries for the world revolution, it will nevertheless follow the course imposed by history. Even if the Second Congress of the Third International pronounces a judgment condemning the Communist Workers' Party of Germany in favor of a party of leaders, the revolutionary communists of Germany will know how to easily deal with this and will not whine about it like the bonzes of the Independent Social Democratic Party of Germany. We are part of the Third International because the Third International is not Moscow. The Third International is not Lenin. The Third International is not Radek. The Third International is the world proletariat fighting for its liberation.